In the last video, we went over routing, and up to this point, we've been treating our pages as standalone components. Upon navigation, the old page is destroyed and a new one takes its place. But this is not necessarily the case. Sometimes we'll have some elements that we always want to have displayed on the page. For instance, we might always want to show a header and a footer. Thankfully, Svelte makes this really easy to do. Instead of adding those elements to every single page in our app, we can instead create a layout component. Pages can be wrapped in a layout component using the slot tag, which indicates where the child component should be placed within the layout. If you're unfamiliar with slots, you can check out one of my previous videos in this course on the topic. To create a layout component that applies to every page, in our routes folder, we need to create a file called underscore underscore layout.svelte, which you may remember making back when we covered CSS. This layout component simply needs to contain a single slot tag, but we can add whatever markup styles and behavior we want as well. So here within our layout file, we have some HTML and Tailwind classes that are creating our header and shopping cart, as well as some logic to show and hide our cart. This means that every single page in our application will display our header as well as be able to open and close our shopping cart. If we check out some different routes, we can confirm this. Now we can put anything we want in this file. The only rule is that it must contain a slot tag for our pages to be inserted into. Just remember, whatever you add to this layout will be shown on every page in your app. We can also create nested layouts similar to how we used nested routes. Each folder within our routes folder can have its own layout. So in our example, we created a root layout that will be applied to every page in our app, but we can also create a layout file in our product folder that will only be applied to the pages within the product folder. Let's create another layout file in our product folder and add a suggested item section to these pages. Now, if we check this in the browser, we only see our root layout, but if we navigate to slash product slash cup, we see both the root layout as well as our product layout. It's important to remember that adding a nested layout will not cancel out the root layout. It will simply display both. Now, what if we want to add this new nested layout only to certain pages within the product directory, but not all of them? So for instance, if we wanted to apply it to our product name page and our apparel index page, but no other pages within the products folder. In this case, we can use named layouts. To create a name layout, you simply create a layout file like we did before, but after layout, we add dash and then the name of our layout. In this case, we can add dash product. Named layouts act just like normal layouts, so this means it's still important to make sure it contains a slot tag. I'm going to go ahead and add a header that says product as well. Now looking in our browser, we'll notice that this layout still is not being displayed on any pages. This is because we're not applying this new name layout to any of our pages. In order to use this new layout, we need to reference the layout name, product, in the file name of the page we want to apply it to. So in this case, we should add at product to the end of our product name page, as well as our apparel index page like this. Now we see that these pages are displaying our new named layout in addition to our other two layouts. It's important to keep scope in mind when using name layouts. Named layouts can only be applied to components in the same subtree. So in this example, we could apply our products layout to any page within the products folder, but we cannot apply it to say our root index page since it's not within the product subtree. Now, what if we have a page where we don't want to inherit any of the parent layouts? In this case, we can create a name layout at the root of our project containing nothing but an empty slot tag. So I'll create one called root. Now, since this is the root of our routes folder, we can reference this layout from any file and that page will have no layout. So if I updated the name of our t-shirt page within our apparel folder to be t-shirt at root and then navigate to it, we see that there's no layout being inherited. But even layouts themselves can inherit from named layouts. So in our example, what if we wanted our default layout in our products folder to not inherit its parent layout? We can reference our named root layout in this layout, and now only what we add to this file will be displayed. So if we route to slash product, we no longer inherit the header. We only see the new items card. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is error pages. If a page fails to load, Svelkit will render an error page. For example, if we try to route to a page that doesn't exist, we will get this default error page. When a page fails to load, Svelkit will render the error page within the layout if one exists. If you don't supply an error page, you'll see this page, which is just the default error page provided by Svelkit. But we can add our own custom error page by creating 
error components alongside our layout and page components. Just like for layouts, each folder within the routes folder can have its own error page. We create these error components by naming a file underscore underscore error.svelte. So let's go ahead and create an error page in the root of our routes folder. This is the root error page, which means it will be displayed for all pages unless a different error page is specified. So now we see our custom error page instead of the default one. So that sums up everything layout related. We now have an efficient way to share components, styles, and logic throughout our app without destroying it on each page change. Now in the next video, let's go over endpoints. I'll see you there.